God bless you, brothers and sisters. I am coming to you tonight um, with a very, very sobering and convicting revelation that the Holy Spirit um, shared with me over the course of two days. Um, it's really, really, really weighing heavy on my heart. I really want to share it. Um, it's one o'clock in the morning, you guys, where I am. And I cannot sleep until I get this off. This word convicted me to my core when I tell you I have not been con this convicted by any message, by anything in a long time. I mean, of course, I've been convicted, but this type of conviction was deep. It was deep. It was very deep, you guys. And I want to share this uh, because yesterday, you know, as me and my children, we were studying the Word of God. and We were in the book of Acts. And um, we were talking about Simon the sorcerer and we were just discussing that passage you know about you know Simon the sorcerer and just his heart and and I asked I asked my kids I said what can we learn from Simon's heart what can we learn about his heart and as you guys as we begin to talk about this the Holy Spirit began to just, just open up the word to us, open up revelation to us. I mean, it was powerful, you guys. Very powerful. And the crazy thing about it is, he didn't let me get up off of that message. He actually led me back. To those scriptures that we were studying and he actually gave me deeper revelation deeper revelation you guys and I really I really pray that you have a heart to hear this that you have an open heart to hear this message because this message right here this message would be the difference of life and death. The difference between life and death for you if you do not know God or if maybe you think you know God but really you still have an evil heart of unbelief. So what you guys are looking at right now is actually a drawing that the Lord led me to do. When I tell y'all the Holy Spirit was up in all of this. He was up in all of this. I'm not the best drawer. You know, I don't, you know, I, I do draw, I do, do art, but I'm not that good at drawing. But hopefully you guys can understand and you can see everything clearly this visual that I am displaying to you guys. What you guys see here is a heart. This is a heart. Again, it may not be the best heart. It may not be the best drawing of a heart, but it's a heart nonetheless. In this heart, we see all types of things growing out of it. All types of things springing forth from it. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 15 verse 19. It says for out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, 
murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. All of these things proceed out of our heart. Also, we see bad fruit coming from this heart, right? Matthew 7, verse 18. It says, A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. I want y'all to really hold on to the scripture right here because the things that I'm going to reveal, the revelation that I'm going to reveal surrounding this scripture right here, you do not want to miss this. I'm telling you, please tune in to this message. This may be one of the most powerful messages that I've ever given. I'm telling y'all because it's so deep. And this will have you really convicted and really looking at yourself and, and, and questioning and, and examining yourself. Because the, the word of God is real. And the word of God is truth. And the Bible says... That when we know the truth, the truth will make us free. Hallelujah. So as we can see, all of these things are springing forth from the heart. We see the, the, the bad fruit over here. We see the, the sexual immorality right here. The weeds springing forth. We see this pride over here springing up. And you know, sometimes we make our sin look pretty. You see what I'm saying? So... You know, sometimes there's there's even weeds that look nice. Have y'all ever saw those little, you know, yellow flowers that bloom and sprout, you know, in the springtime in your grass? Well, those are really weeds. They may look pretty. They might be bright and colorful. But guess what? They're still weeds. Over here, we have the evil thoughts springing forth. We got blasphemies. We got adulteries. We got all of these things springing forth from this heart, you guys. What is at the seat of this heart? What is at the root of this heart? Unbelief. Unbelief. Hebrews. 3 verse 12 says take heed brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God my God you guys we we have to truly examine our hearts the Lord showed me this is why salvation is by faith the exact opposite of the human heart faith is what saves us but unbelief is at the core of every heart and this is the this is the reason for every sin. See, many people don't know this. This is the revelation that the Lord has been giving me. Unbelief is at the root of every sin. Many people try to pluck up the weeds without going down to the root. This is the core, you guys. Unbelief. Many people don't even know that they have unbelief. A lot of people think that they are strong in faith. A lot of people say, yes, I believe in Jesus. I believe that he died for my sins. But yet you see all of these things springing forth in their life. And the Bible says you will know them by their fruit. You will know what? Who? You will know what tree they are of. You will know what manner of man they are by their fruit. My God, you guys, 
as we see if you read or if you want to go to me in Acts chapter 8 Acts chapter 8 and I'm just going to read a little bit of this for you guys because once again this is deep this is very very deep we see the account of Simon it talks about you know in the beginning it goes right into who he was before he came into belief it talks about how he was a sorcerer he was a big time sorcerer he was a big time warlock he bewitched the people everybody everybody in Samaria he had bewitched you guys so Simon he had a lot of power do y'all understand he had power but he didn't have the power of God he didn't have the power that came from the Holy Spirit he had power that came from the dark kingdom you see but the Bible says in verse 13 it says then Simon himself believed also and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. So we see that Simon, he became a believer. He was baptized. He even began to follow Philip because he really wanted to follow Christ. You see? But the thing about Simon is that he had a lust for power. He still lusted after power. It talks about how, you know, Simon, he began to see that as the apostles were to lay their hands upon people, they would be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he wondered, he was amazed by this. He wanted to receive, to receive that same power. But he thought that he could pay for the gift of the Holy Spirit. My God, that's evil. And by him doing this, you guys, you know, Peter told him, thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Thy heart is not right in the sight of God. So we see, we see that, that there's a heart issue again. This stuff is stemming from the heart. It's, it's stemming from the unbelief unbelief you see this is the thing about unbelief many people start off believing just like Simon he started off believing but guess what he allowed that lust to be conceived in his heart you see what I'm saying that lust for power he missed that he desired that he, he, he probably started thinking about, man, you know, when I was out there, you know, uh, bewitching all them people and, 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 you know, deceiving all them people, man, I, I did have power. I had some great power. Everybody believed in what I was saying and what I was doing. Everybody was following me. You see what I'm saying? Many people are doing that today. A lot of people are doing that today. They still look back on their past and they say, man. You know, I, I remember when I used to have a lot of money, you know, before I came to Christ, you know, I didn't have to go through all of this stuff. I didn't have to struggle like this. I didn't have to go through all of this suffering and all this pain. You see what I'm saying? All of these things stem from an evil heart of unbelief. Simon Hart. His heart was not right in the sight of God. This is why he said, Peter told him, he said, thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, 
that none of these things which he have spoken come upon me. So we see that Simon, he was afraid, you know. He was afraid. He did fear God. He didn't want those things to come upon him. But his heart was not right. And because of that, he had no part or lot in the matter of what? Holy Spirit, receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, we, our hearts have to be right. We have to be truly repentant when we come to Christ. Repentant of what? A lot of times, you know, especially in these last days, you guys, the, the, the message for this hour is what? Repent, right? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Turn from your sins, right? A lot of times people try to turn from these things. They try to cut all of these things down. You see? And, and, and many people, many Christians try to get these things out of their life, right? They come to Christ. You know, they try to get these things out of their life. But only for these things to keep steadily springing back up. Why? Because of unbelief. They didn't get the root. We have to get the root. We have to pluck up that root. And guess what? That root is hard to pluck up. You see what I'm saying? It's hard. It's hard to get that root. Those roots be deeply rooted. And they be hard to pluck out. This is why God made salvation to be by faith. A lot, of, a lot of times people think that faith is so easy. If faith was that easy, he would have never said, When the Son of Man shall return to the earth, shall he find faith in the earth? That's a sad thing for the Lord to even have to ask that. That lets us know that it's not going to be a lot of people that are truly operating in faith that lets us know that it's going to be a lot of people who thought they were in faith but they would be the same one crying lord lord have i not done this and that but the lord is going to reject them and say he never knew them because he never knew them god is not concerned about your works he's not he's not concerned about your your outer righteous works and deeds and all of these things if your heart is not right with him if you still producing all of these things in your life then guess what there is unbelief there period because why because the bible says in matthew seven eighteen, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit you guys we have to get this because we we don't want to be one of those people on that day crying, Lord, Lord. We don't want to be one of those people. We want to know that we know that we know that we are truly born again. Filled with the Spirit of God. 1 John chapter 3 verse 7 through 9. It says, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin why because his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God my God my God y'all have to get this we have to get this because this is this is why the the church is so lukewarm this is why the church is so messed up everybody think they have god everybody think they're saved everybody think they're filled with the holy spirit everybody think that they're born again everybody think that god is speaking to them everybody think that god is using them everybody think that god is sending them but he's not he's not speaking to everybody he's not sending everybody that's the truth you guys we got to realize that if we are truly born of God, we will not sin. Why? 
because there will be a seed of faith here a seed of righteousness planted you guys and guess what the only thing that can come from that is the fruit of the spirit my god the fruit of the spirit the fruit of righteousness a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit so if you're truly born again with the seed of righteousness planted in your heart you will not sin it is impossible for you to sin you, his seed remains in you the Bible says you cannot sin a lot of times people try to twist this scripture and make it seem like oh well you know he didn't mean it like that he meant it like that he meant it like that if you truly born again and you have the seed of righteousness in you there is no way that that seed of righteousness can produce unrighteousness so if you have unrighteousness in your heart then you need to check yourself you need to really examine your heart and 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 see. Hold on, is there belief in my unbelief in my heart? Is there unbelief? Is, is there a root of unbelief in my heart, God? The Bible says, examine yourselves that you be in the faith, lest you be like a a reprobate. My God, we don't want to be deceived, you guys. You guys, Ananias and Sapphira. In Acts chapter 5, they appeared to be as believers because they sold a certain possession. You see what I'm saying? So on the outside, people might have been thinking, like, oh, you know, they with us. You know, they, they, they selling with all that they have and they laying it at the apostles' feet. You see what I'm saying? But Peter told them when they lied to the Holy Ghost, he said, Satan has filled their heart to lie to the Holy Ghost. Excuse me, you guys. It all starts in the heart. What is in your heart that will cause a person to lie to the Holy Ghost? Unbelief. When there's unbelief there, there's lust. When there's lust there, you, you lust after money and you start lying to the Holy Ghost because you want to hold on to your money. You don't truly believe. You see what I'm saying? When there's, when there's unbelief there, you start trying to you know, seek after your own power because you don't truly believe in the power of Jesus Christ. My God, we got to get this. Whoever is born of God doth not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin. You guys, if we have any of these things producing in our hearts, if we have any of these things producing from our life, if you are struggling with any type of sin, I don't care if it's masturbation, pornography, and I'm not here to condemn anyone. I'm not here to condemn or judge anyone. But this is the truth, you guys. And if we truly love God, and if we truly want to be saved, and if we truly want to make it in, you guys, we have to truly come to terms with, with this word right here because this is deep. I'm, I'm telling y'all, I, I even had to repent, me and my kids. We had to repent, and we had to seek the Lord about this because we want to make sure that we're saved. We want to make sure that we not just, you know, a lot of people talk about God. Many people say things about God. Many, many people profess to love God, you know, but their hearts are far from Him. My God, you got a heart like this? You, you producing these type of fruit in your life? Your heart is far from God. I don't care how much you try to worship him, pray, read your Bible, do any of that stuff. That stuff is in vain. If you truly are not born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the seed of righteousness, the seed, the seed of God. You guys, if we are truly born again, we will not sin. That is the truth. This is... This is the truth of where God is trying to get his church. We will not we will walk in righteousness. The Bible says, "Little children, let no man deceive you." Why did he say that? Because many people in this hour, in these last days, many Christians, many pastors will tell you, "Oh, you know, everybody sins, you know." You still born again. You still you still saved. Many people are false converts. 
many people are not even truly in the faith but you're talking about they're saved and they're doing all type of stuff behind closed doors they're struggling with all type of sin why are they struggling with all this sin if the Holy Spirit is in them that's impossible it's impossible you guys so he said let no man deceive you don't let nobody tell you oh yeah yeah you 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 save yep you 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 doing all this wicked stuff but yep you still saved that's right because God loves you and he died for you and he knew that you was a sinner you was gonna be a sinner you're gonna stay a sinner what what he said let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness is righteous so if you're truly born again, you got that seed of righteousness in your heart. You will do righteousness because you are righteous. You have that righteous seed in you. You have the seed of God remaining in you. But he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. You see how there's no gray areas? It's either black or white, hot or cold, good or evil. It's, it's simple with God. It's simple, but many people make it so hard. If we are if we are committing sin, you guys, we are of the devil. You cannot commit sin and, and still claim to 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 have the precious spirit of God living and dwelling in you, and, and God is just sitting there allowing you to do all of this sin. It's impossible, you guys. So we gotta really search our hearts because. We do not want to be one of those people on that day crying, Lord, Lord, thinking that we were saved the whole time, thinking that we was walking in faith the whole time. But really, we had a root of unbelief deep up in our heart that we never thought to search out. The Bible says the heart is wicked, desperately wicked, evil. Who can know it? Who can truly know their own heart? I know I can't. That's why I asked the Lord to search my heart. And I examine myself and make sure I'm in the faith because I'm not playing no games. I really love the Lord and I really want to be in heaven with him. And now is the time that everybody really needs to be taking this time out to seek the Lord with all of their hearts, to lay before God, to fast, to pray, to really hear from God. Like for real, it is time out for playing church. Churches are closed down. It, God is God is waking people up and God is allowing the remnant to rise up I'm telling y'all there is a remnant in this hour there is a remnant so we have to make sure that we are truly in the faith you guys we have to make sure we have to make sure you guys if that seed of faith is in our heart you guys that means we are born of God and if we are born of God we will have the Holy Spirit living in us and, and those living waters springing up into eternal life we will literally we will literally do righteous we will literally be holy we will walk as he walked and and that's that's just that's period we will walk as he walked but if we are unrighteous truly if the tree the root and everything that that's coming out of us is bitterness you guys do not be deceived get saved for real we need to get saved for real there's nothing wrong with because you know god is merciful and the Bible says that he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So even if, you know, God shows you that, hey, maybe I'm not truly born again. Maybe I don't truly have the Holy Spirit. Maybe I'm not truly in the faith like I thought. Get in the faith now. He's giving you time. He's giving you time. Seek the Lord now while he may be found and call upon him now while, while he is near. Hallelujah. Because you don't want to be the unrighteous. The unrighteous, they sin. And they are of the devil. Only thing that is, is, is springing up into their life 
is that wrath and that judgment that's being stored up in heaven and that will be poured out upon the head of the wicked so we don't need to play because hell fire is very real it is a real place that we do not want to go we don't want to go there we don't want to be separated from our Lord for eternity we don't want to be in agony and torment forever and ever we don't want that you guys so it's time that we really take our salvation seriously and not neglect these things not neglect our salvation not let these things slip not allow uh, different things to come into our heart because you can be a believer but then your faith becomes shipwrecked you can become a castaway you can walk away from the faith yes you can you can lose your salvation if you 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 can you can lose it you can not God God is just when God gives it it's up it's up to you now so you can walk away from the faith you can abandon him God would never leave us nor forsake us but he will always be with us even until the end. But you can leave him. You can abandon the faith. You can go off and do your own thing. The Bible says right here in Hebrews 3 verse 12. Take heed brethren. Take heed. This was a warning to the church. Take heed brethren. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. In departing from the living God. The only time that you can depart from the living God. Is if you are already with him. So that lets us know that we can depart and we can allow our hearts to become evil through unbelief, allowing unbelief in. You see what I'm saying? So Lord, you guys, let's deal with our hearts on today. Let's search our hearts. Let's truly uh, do some real cleansing in our hearts, you guys. Some uprooting. If you need deliverance, you might need deliverance because those, those, those roots of unbelief sometimes they need to be uprooted when i tell you they need to be they need to be plucked out they need to be they need to be pulled out with force the bible says the kingdom of violent the kingdom of god suffered violence but the violence taken by force we got to we got to take these things out of our heart by force sometimes and unbelief is a very very hard root root that is in our hearts sometimes and we need to we need to really get it out get it out trust in the lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding and in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path it is by grace that we are saved not of not of uh, uh you know not of ourselves lest any man should boast but it is a gift of god it is a gift of god god has given us grace but we have to believe only as we believe we will have access into that grace only as we b believe we will have peace with our God with our maker only as we believe on Jesus we can experience the power of God in our lives only as we truly believe on him you guys only as we truly believe will we be saved only as we truly believe will we have eternal life we have to believe in God not just say with our mouth, but in our hearts or in our actions, we deny him. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. So I pray that we are sowing to the spirit, you guys. And that we are truly walking after the spirit so that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Everyone who is in Christ, there is no condemnation for you. For those who, of you who are in Christ, who walks not after the flesh, but after the spirit, but you have to be in Christ. You have to have the Holy Spirit because whoever has not the spirit of God or the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So that's a serious thing. We, if we don't have the Holy Spirit, we literally don't belong to him. Don't let people lie to you and fool you. You better be seeking the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You better be seeking the empowerment from, from on high. I'm telling y'all. We don't want to be dead in this hour. Just sitting here. You know. In some. In singing Kumbaya. What in the world? It's time to wake up. It's time to get on fire for God. It's time to get serious in our walk. It's time to walk after righteousness and holiness. It's time to be a light. It's time to be really. Truly obeying the word of God. Every, every word, not just some words, 
but everywhere you guys so I love you guys and I and I pray that this blessed you I pray that it stirred you up I pray that it convicted you I pray that it pricked and pierced your heart I pray that you would die to yourself and receive this truth receive it let it be like a seed of truth a seed of righteousness planted in your heart today so that it can spring up and bring forth good fruit in your life, you guys. I love you. Stay encouraged. Stay seeking the Lord with all of your heart. Only when you seek him with all of your heart, you will find him. I love you all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.